Is Harris holding on to her gains in the critical swing state of Wisconsin? This is Kotel, and let's talk some politics. Wisconsin is the swingiest of swing states, narrowly going for Trump in 2016 and Biden in 2020, respectively. Previously, Vice President Harris seems to have gained between two to three points in the polling versus where President Biden stood in the race, depicting a contest which was well within the margin of error, but one where Harris had gained ground. More recent polling shifts indicate that Harris has maintained those gains, but does not appear to have expanded them, showing a tight race, at least according to pre-debate polling. Once more, I will look at the shifts for in-state polling to try to ascertain the momentum in the race. For this video, we have five pollsters. We'll look at two from previous videos on Wisconsin. The two pollsters that are repeated are the Hill Emerson and Marquette. We do have the inclusion of three new surveys, CBS News YouGov, Bloomberg Morning Consult, and Trafalgar for the state of Wisconsin. With that being said, let's get into it. Starting with the Hill-Emerson survey, previously they showed that right after Biden withdrew, Harris gained three points over where he stood, leading to a tied race at 47. Their most recent survey at the end of August, though, showed Trump gaining two points to reach 49, while Harris gained a single point, hitting 48, a net gain of one point for Trump showing a tightening race. However, it is worth noting that they switched from previously using a registered voter population for the two surveys we looked at previously to a likely voter model for this latest poll, which may explain the shift. Next, we have the RV survey by Bloomberg Morning Consult. Over the July 4th holiday, they had Biden leading Trump 44 to 47. Their latest poll, also conducted at the end of August, showed Trump maintaining his level of support at 44, but with Harris gaining substantially to reach 52, a net gain of five points for the vice president. The likely voter survey for Trafalgar in July, just prior to Biden dropping out, had Trump leading him 46 to 43. In their next survey from the 28th to 30th of August, they found that Trump had gained one point to hit 47, while Harris had gained three to hit 46, nearly a tie with only a slight lead for Trump. However, it does show a net gain of two for Harris over where Biden had placed previously. Next, the CBS News YouGov Likely Voter Survey in April had Trump leading Biden 50 to 49. Their most recent poll, though, in early September had Trump losing a point to hit 49, while Harris had gained two to reach 51, a three-point net gain for the vice president. Finally, we have Marquette, which showed Harris gaining a single point over where Biden stood previously against Trump, with her landing at 50 and Trump at 49. Their most recent poll in early September shows Trump losing a point to land at 48, while Harris gained another two, hitting 52, a net gain of three over her July standing, and a total improvement of four points since Biden dropped out. So the recent polling shifts generally validate the previous conclusion that I had that Harris had gained approximately two to three points over where Biden stood before he dropped out. We do have two outliers, though, the Hill, Emerson, and Bloomberg Morning Consult. As discussed earlier, it could be that the switch in model types from RV to LV may explain the shift for the Hill. On the other hand, we don't have much of a history to go off of for Bloomberg in the state of Wisconsin. But other polling in other swing states that they have show that their models tend to be very volatile compared to other polls, and this may account for the larger shift compared to the other pollsters. Generally, the pollsters that do have a record that we have looked at here overestimate Democratic support in presidential elections for the past two cycles in Wisconsin by a margin of about four to seven points, just outside their margins of error. Trafalgar has the best record based on their 2020 final poll being, well, almost within a single point of the final result. With the exception of Bloomberg, the race appears very tight and within the margin of error. But some polls do show Harris edging towards the magic number of 50 and above, which would secure her election regardless of any third-party attrition. Although Trump may have bled some minor support, for the most part he has remained steady at a high level of support as well, though. We don't know yet how the debate will impact the race, but unless there is a second debate, which at the moment seems unlikely, there may not be any other scheduled events that alter this razor-thin race for Wisconsin. A black swan event or an October surprise may still come along, but by their nature, they are hard to predict. 
The old refrain of turnout and organization once more must be the refrain for both sides who want to secure the critical swing state of Wisconsin. But what do you think? Will the debate move the needle in Wisconsin? And are the polls even right? Or are we going to see a similar polling error in Wisconsin as we saw in 2016 and 2020? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is Kotel, and thanks for watching.